Welcome to Who Smarted. We're trying to reach as many people as we can with our free podcast and curriculum. And really, nothing is more helpful than you telling a friend, a parent, or educator about the show. And if you haven't already signed up for our email list, sign up today so you can get your free curriculum and activity guide with every episode. Sign up at www.whosmarted.com. Shout out to Smarty Pants Zoe, Hunter, Lincoln, and Quinn C. Thanks for being some of our fans in Los Angeles. Want your own shout out? Like, follow, and comment on Facebook at facebook.com backslash whosmarted. And you might hear your name on an upcoming episode. Now, it's time to take a long look in the mirror on Reflections. Ah, my wicked queen. Off to bed. Yes, servant. I need my beauty sleep. Can I bring you a snack? No, I never eat past noon. Can I run you a bath? I've already bathed four times today. I'm good. Shall I polish your mirror for you? No. What makes you think I'll be looking into my mirror? Nothing, sorry. Go away. Before I turn you into a hamster. Yes, my queen. Ah, alone at last. (laughs) All right, let's get to it. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? The magic mirror is always right. The fairest of all is Snow White. (gasps) Ha! Snow White? Always Snow White. Why not me? Why not me? Well, for starters, you have spinach in your teeth. Okay, it's out. Am I the fairest now? Nope. You're still not the fairest. I hate you, Magic Mirror. That's it. I'm gonna smash you. I just need something to break you with. Aha! I can use my cell phone. Take that! I wouldn't do that if I were you. What are you doing in the Queen's lair? Who are you? Your mirror invited me over. We're old friends. What up, dude? I'm also hosting a podcast. Who's smarted? Yeah, well, say goodbye to your mirror friend, because I'm about to smash it. Whoa, whoa. If you do that, how will you be able to see yourself, in case you have spinach in your teeth? I'll use my cell phone to take a selfie. See? Oof. That's not a very good picture of me. It doesn't look like me at all. Let me try again. Ew. Terrible. What is wrong with this camera? I'm gonna smash this phone, too! Hold on. Before you do that, maybe I can help explain. There's a reason you don't look the same in pictures as you do in the mirror. Huh? But what is a mirror? What is it made of? And how does it work? I don't know. Tell me before I turn you into a goat. (laughs) It's time for a little self-reflection and a big whiff of science on... How smart and... Who's smarted? Who's smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science? Or history? Listen up! Everyone, we make smarting lots of fun on Who's Smarted? Okay, smarty pants, have you had a minute to reflect on reflections? For example, have you ever noticed you tend to look different in the mirror than you do in photos? That's not what I look like. Which do you usually like better? Hmm. Mirror you or photo you? Mirror. Chances are that you like mirror you better. Yes! But they're both you, right? Um. So why do you think your mirror reflection is more flattering than your photo? Is it A, because mirrors allow for movement and photos are still? B, because photos show only one angle? Ah. C, because your face is not perfectly even? (laughs) Or D, You are very, very familiar with your mirror image, and anything else just looks weird. Oh, hi, mirror me. So which did you say? Ooh, ooh. Well, if you're thinking any one of these answers sounds like it could be right, that's because they're all right answers. (gasps) Nobody's face is perfectly even, where both sides match exactly. We call that asymmetrical. And it's most noticeable when you look at your face straight on. Whoa! But because you can move around while looking in a mirror, 
You can pose at exactly the angle you like best. Well, hey, good looking. So a motionless photo image rarely lives up to your mirrored reflection. Oof, that's not a very good picture of me. But most of all, you just get really used to seeing your mirror image. It's what your brain recognizes as most familiar. Oh, hey, I know you. You get used to your mirror image since it's the easiest way for you to check how your hair looks or to make sure there's no spinach in your teeth. Ha! <laughs> But despite being the way you most recognize yourself, a mirror is actually not the most accurate view of what others see when they look at you. I beg your pardon. Here, let's take a look. If you're near a mirror, wherever you are, go look in it while you listen. Okay. And if not, just listen along and you can try it in a mirror another time. You ready, evil queen? Very ready. Okay. Now while looking in the mirror, raise your right hand. What happened? Did the reflection of you raise the hand from the same side as you did? It did. Right. And that's how you know you are not seeing what others see of you. Wait, you mean the mirror is lying? Aha! So I am the fairest of all. Nope. Still Snow White. Hold on. Think of it this way. When you look at your reflection, it's like you're seeing a backwards version of yourself. To test this, write a word on a piece of paper. Any word. I'll wait. Now... Read that word. Easy, right? Now go to a mirror and hold up the paper. Is the word backwards and hard to read? Well, that's not what I wrote. In the mirror, you're seeing a reverse image of yourself, not the right side version that everyone else sees. Whoa. So then, how do I know how I look to others? For that, you'll need a camera. Go ahead. Take a selfie with your phone. You can do the same at home. Borrow a cell phone if you don't have one. But be sure to raise your right hand in the picture. Ready? Go. Cheese. Now, look. You raised your right hand, but in the photo, your right hand raises on the other side of the frame. Hmm. That's because instead of a reverse image, you're seeing your actual image. And that is what people see when they look at you. Oh. Photos flip your reflection, and seeing an image of yourself flipped can, well, flip you out. Ah, so that's why I prefer my image in my magic mirror. Yep. Or just a regular mirror. Well, hello. Or a window. Or a pond. But wait a second. How do reflections work exactly? Good question. It has to do with light. But I don't see light. I see me. Beautiful, delightful me. (sighs) Yes, but the person you see in a mirror or window is not really you. It's a reflection of you. It's an image of you made up of light. Impossible! It's not impossible. It's science. But before I tell you, reflect on this. So, how does light cause a reflection? I don't know. Easy. Nothing is visible without light. Whether from the sun or fire or a light bulb, we need light to shine on an object and bounce off of it so that we can see it. And some surfaces allow for better bouncing. Think of it like... Bouncing a ball off a smooth surface. Here, use this tennis ball. Bounce it. You can do the same at home with a ball if you have one handy. Awesome. Now, imagine that ball is a single wave of light. It only hits a fraction of the surface, which doesn't reveal the whole picture. Hmm. But what if endless tiny tennis balls bounced off the same surface, covering every inch of it entirely? Ta-da! If those balls were light waves, they'd have illuminated the entire surface. But I can't see myself in just any well-lit object. Good point. So, how does a reflection occur? I asked you. And I'm asking you, smarty pants. How come you can see a reflection in a window, but not a wall? A mirror, but not paper? A pool of water... But not mud. I, I... What about you listening? What do reflective surfaces like metal, glass, and still water have in common? Hmm. If you guessed that all these surfaces are exceptionally smooth, you're right. The smoother the surface, the more evenly light can bounce off of it in exactly the same angle. Ah. As soon as the smooth surface is disturbed, the reflection becomes a mess. Like if you throw a rock into a pond causing ripples. Well, the same is true for solid surfaces. A shiny sheet of metal will show you your reflection. But if that same metal is shaped into a sculpture, the light can't bounce off it in perfectly identical angles anymore. And you wouldn't get a clear reflection. 
So why are mirrors made of glass and not metal? For an evil queen, you sure do ask good questions. To answer that, let's start at the beginning. Way back around 600 BCE, what do you think was the first smooth, shiny, reflective surface that was turned into the first mirrors? I don't know. Was it A, gold, B, silver, C, copper, or D, rock? Got your answer? You guessed it. The first reflective surface of all time was rock. So the first queen said, rock, rock on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Okay, well, it wasn't just any rock. Have you ever heard of obsidian? Nope. It's volcanic rock, also known as volcanic glass. It's completely black, but when polished, it allows for a pretty good reflection. Hello, gorgeous. I'm not staring at a volcano. Okay, well, if you didn't guess rock, your instincts are still pretty good. Because all those other materials, gold, silver, copper, even bronze and lead, soon became popular materials for mirror making. However, the modern mirror, a combination of hot, hot metal and smooth glass paint, was first invented in the Middle Ages. Hear ye, hear ye. Centuries later, during the Renaissance, they developed a thinner and much cooler layer of lead along the back of a glass pane. I say, old chap. Lead eventually evolved into silver, and then in 1835, Justus von Liebig invented the process for what is typically used today, a thin layer of aluminum sprayed onto the backside of glass. Yeah, das ist gut. I see. But what makes my mirror magical? The magic is that through sheer ingenuity, humans were able to improve on the reflections first seen in nature, in lakes or off rocks. Wow, there's a person in this puddle. But that's not magic. That's science. Fine. I will not smash my magic mirror. You're still not the fairest. Ha! <gasps> Thanks for listening to Who Smarted. New episodes come out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Please tell a friend, parent, or educator about the show. Today's episode, Reflections, was written by Jenna Hoban and voiced by Jenna Hoban, Sheffield Chastain, Jason Williams, and yours truly, Jerry Colbert. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who Smarted was recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studio. Theme song by Brian Suarez. Lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. This has been an Atomic Entertainment production. Who Smarted? Who Smarted?